Hello again, welcome back to the Ominous Bequest. Now, it turns out uh, I've been missing something in the library, which uh, may help. I can't open that, which is fine, but what I haven't noticed is there's another book here sitting on top of the shelf. The Vault Door Manual. Who knows, maybe it has an emergency code. Harveston and Smith High Security Vault Door Installation and Maintenance Guide. Serial number blah blah blah. Congratulations on your decision to purchase a Harveston and Smith High Security Vault Door. At Harveston and Smith we strive to provide you with the very best in safekeeping and protection. Serving major customers across the city for over 50 years, we have earned our reputation as an upstanding business and our renowned name in maximum security. You skip several pages full of self-praising gibberish. Chapter 1. Installation. Continue. Thanks to the special alloy the security door is made of and the reinforced concrete surrounding it, there is no possible way of entering the vault by force. Security Tip 13. Our doors are designed to withstand even medium-sized earthquakes. But be aware that large vibrations could cause the security lock to reset itself to the standard factory setting. Browsing. Chapter 3. The Combination Lock. This chapter provides you with an easy to follow step by step guide on how to change your lock's combination. This is a very crucial step, and you should take it as soon as your vault door has been installed. 1. Remove the 16 screws at the door's back to open the cover plate. 2. Push the buttons, labelled A and B, simultaneously, and wait until four small dials appear. 3. Turn the dials to set your new combination. 4. Repeat step 2, and screw on the cover plate. Security tip number 32. The standard factory setting is the last four digits of the door's serial number. Change it as soon as possible and memorize your new combination. Do not write it down. Serial number ends in 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh god, the combination to the vault. 1, 2, 3, 4 all along. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, I really should have guessed, shouldn't I? Should have just tried. Oh, what am I going to try? Oh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Ah. Ah. That's amusing. Oh, wrong way. I, I find that amusing. Back to the vault. I want to see if the earthquakes have reset it to its factory setting. As predicted by the manual. I didn't even try 0451, but you know. Yep. Wow. All right. Ah, uh, there's a little secure door inside the vault as well. Well, they found me jewels, so here I'll take those. Some safes that are no longer so safe. Some masks. Uh, I think I'll have those. Oh, more rings. What's that switch to? I don't know. I pick this lock. Got some weird pattern on the door. It does seem like I can pick it though. But Oops. Oh. What does this do? Open that if I hadn't smashed it. I don't know. How odd. Okay. Right, so here are the eight switches. Now, when we're confronted with the eight switches, we need to remember we need to look to the stars, which means find this painting of the dragon that we've got somewhere and use it as a guide for what we need to do. Where is it? Where is it? There we are, the hunting dragon. Uh, hmm. Hmm. How does that help? Uh, right, three on the right are all in a line. So that's definitely going to be there. And probably that there, I think. Two in the middle are close together. 
The one to the left. That one's far left. That's top. That's bottom. No, these must be downs. That's top. That's bottom. Yes. Okay, what have we here? Oh, hello. Don't scare me like that. Did you say help me? You certainly scared me. Right, so here's a book. Ancient tome. Hello there. Oh, you're just a head on a stick. Okay, I don't be so worried. Do I? Ancient tome. Words of wisdom are written in this book. Words that shall guide you through the path that awaits you. No matter what you are seeking, be it treasures or enlightenment, always remember the following advice. When trapped in a corner, the prey shall be the one to signal the beginning of the hunting season. The rising sun will be its refuge. Hmm. Ah, this does sound dangerous. Maybe that's the pole in here. Let's see what's in this chest. Oh, gold. Got a skull. Great. And a crooked pole. Look at the ethics. Okay. Don't know why you have such a creepy place in your vault, but uh, I want nothing more to do with it. I still don't know what that switch does. Eh. Alright, now we have the pole, we can actually get into the affects. And we have that skull as well, where, which is somewhere. Where is it? Creepy looking skull head. There we are, hello. Ah, oh, maybe I'll stick that on my mantelpiece. I'm sure it's nothing. Right. To the first floor. And let's use our pole. Pole of plus one latch extension. Oh, what's that? Well, I'm not going to get in there, but uh, it's blocked off. Okay, where's the, where's the second one? In here. Which has a ladder, that'll be handy. I don't know, I've been in here for a while. He's been painting a odd portrait. Library safe key and a diary? Robert Farrington's notes. I have painted the image I saw in my dream, and now that I look at it, I feel terrified. What is this deformed grimace? Is it even human? It reminds me of one of the relics my father retrieved from the crypt before he went mad. The more I think of it, the more I am convinced that there must be a curse on the name Farrington. I wish my wife was still here. Martha could always lighten my spirits when I was in a dark mood. Her lively soul kept the darkness away. Now that Martha has gone, the strange noises in Elizabeth's bedroom have returned. It is as if my mother cannot find any rest, not even in death. I ordered the captain to seal off the room. Alright. That... What did that do? Something down there? There's something in here. You sound like it's in here. Down the ladder there. Aha! Uh -huh. Indeed, that is the passage into the next room, I guess. Well, before I go there, there's another attic hatch up here, which I can poke at now with my long stick of poking. Uh, I mean, there's just a little 
handle there, right? You think you could jump up? If I could jump up to it, I could jump up and grab it and pull it, but no. A long stick or nothing. Let's see what's in this one. What's the furniture? pages have been ripped out of this book, and only the last few have writing on them. Last entry. What have I done? Only now that Elizabeth has taken her life do I realise the evil that has been at work in our family for years. I should have noticed his foul schemes much earlier, but I was blinded with curiosity and greed. He is a deceiver, using deluding words as a formidable weapon with which he has trapped me in a cage of malevolence. But now I will break out from this prison and follow my wife into death. The builder shall judge and punish me as he sees fit. Perhaps one day somebody will find these pages and undo the ill I have dealt. Edward Farrington. New objectives. Optional. Looks like Robert's father Edward had some dark secrets. Try to find all parts of his diary. So I've got... Well, I've got four. Numbers one, two, four, and five. At least a part three and maybe a part six or seven. I don't know. Still missing the gems and the information about the mages, but uh, we are making progress in finding new parts. Attic windows proved. What? I haven't even found any attic windows that were locked. Oh, yes, I have. Oh, I can get on the roof. Ah, so that's how I get to the first houses at the house. So I can get into the creepy bedroom or I can go climbing out on the roof where I'm going to fall to my death, right? We go here. Oh, stop. Um, nothing under this pile of grapes? No. Is there, you know, seriously any reason to go into the creepy bedroom when instead I can try to fall to my death? Obviously not. Uh, it is the northeast tower, is the one I actually need, but, uh... Oh, hello. There's a whole lot of, uh... whole upper... Whatever you would call this. This whole part of the roof is accessible. Okay. Oh. Oh, I can go to this part of the attic. Where's my attic? Where's my attic windows key? Oh, uh -huh, alright. Come back to that in a minute. But before I do... So I've been in there, and I've been in there now. <laughs> I could... Look down here. Ah! That just got a terrible idea. Anything in here? Gold candlestick. Now, this one is not the one with the sun, right? The sun spark. The sun spark is underneath this one. Is there like a trap door? I didn't really check the, the ground thoroughly. Doesn't appear so. Alright. Let's go in this other attic, see what creepy secrets we discover in here. Alright, let's pull it about. Oh. Blood tear. That's right, it was hidden in the dusty attic. Okay, two out of three gems. Light still works at least. Makes it less creepy. More crates. Looking table. There's just more notes. That's uh, Edward's diary complete. That's notes part three, I guess. Uh, so I read that one. I read that one. I read this one. Well, that was the end of the second one. Here yeah, starts the third one. Entry 107. Every single night I wake up bathed in sweat. 
How could I have been so impudent and foolish to think I could just plunder a crypt without upsetting the peace of all, all the departed souls? All I could think of was finding the talisman of life, an ancient relic mentioned in one of the old books I had found. According to this book, the talisman is, an, is in an old study somewhere in the depths of the crypt. I was searching every stone of the tombs for secret entrances when this glowing figure came out of the wall, screaming at me in a disturbingly unnatural voice. No matter how hard I try, I can't get this tormented face out of my memories. The apparition stared at me with these black holes where once had been eyes, and told me not to continue searching for the talisman of life, unless I wanted to raise all the dead around me. The next thing I remember is that I was getting back to the surface, my throat feeling sore from screaming all the way up. Entry 109. I submitted my proposal to the high priests today morning. As expected, they acted rather reluctant and sceptical, but I am quite confident they will re reconsider as soon as they get to see the underground hall. It is indeed ideal for a Hammerite church. I have no idea about the original purpose of this large chamber. Except for a strange ceiling structure and a gamma symbol engraved in one of the walls, the room is empty. If the priests agree, I shall finally be able to do adequate penance for my sins, and my nightmares shall come to an end. Right, we have read the rest of the diary. So we have one more of the gems to find. We still don't have any information about the mages, although, at least not according to the objectives in actual fact, we kind of do have quite a lot of information. Smash this. All right. Well, I can get to the attics, but I don't, still don't know how to get into this other tower. Mm. It's not going to happen from here, is it? Through the attics, lead to the vault, I guess, before worrying about the tower. I guess it's finally time for the creepy bedroom. That's the guest bedrooms. The creepy bedroom is this side. So, uh, let's hope Garrett doesn't die horribly here. Oh, this is the bathroom? Oh, this is the bathroom of the creepy bedroom, of course. Yeah, there's the creepy, creepy viney sounds. Hmm. Have we had even this toilet? Nope, not even water. What lies beyond this door? Ghost. Alright. Where's she hanging herself? Well, that must be her. Uh, let's see what this says. I remember now. I am a descendant of him, and this is why I have been feeling his presence. A century ago, he visited my grand grand grandmother and gave her a child in her sleep. A daughter she always thought she had conceived from her husband. He planned to take her daughter away once she would turn 18, but his plans were foiled. Now he wants to use me for his evil plans. He has been influencing my husband, and his eyes are focused on my son as well. I even know his name, but I dare not write it down. I try to be strong, to withstand his whispers, but I feel there is only one way I can lift this curse from my family, and this way I am determined to go. I hope one day my husband and my son will understand my actions. Elizabeth. Oh. Oh, well, here we have another passage. So, she's been... What's this? by the same figure. All right, so this is a tower I couldn't get to. <sighs> oh, shit. <coughs> Ow. Uh, maybe some water will cool it down? Uh -huh. Okay, ouch. 
Uh, and then, despite all my previous healing potions and food, I am now out of healing items. Uh, right, so we got the three gemstones. Uh, okay. What does that mean then? Almost dead. The foolish was trying to pick up the uh, stone twice. Are there any other attics? Is there an attic accessible from the guest bedroom? There was, right? No? Or the library? No. No attic. Oh, I've got the library. Uh, Safety, of course. Here we are. What's in the library safe? Some money and... Honoured Lord Farrington. As an expert on the history of the Dawn Order, I can say with utmost certainty that the horn you gave me to identify once belonged to Lauren, second mage of the Dawn. The mages of this order devoted themselves to finding answers to life's most fundamental questions. They lived underground, totally secluded from the outside world, and studied for many generations. There is not much agreement as to why the Order was abandoned, but the fact is that the Majors decided to seal off all entrances to the Order's halls and leave everything behind. It is known, however, that there is still one accessible entrance, which is marked by the Dawn Order symbol, a sun rising from the sea. The location of this entrance is shrouded in darkness but it is said that it can only be opened by the call of Dolores Horn, the very horn that is in your possession, Lord Farrington. It is a relic of inestimable value, and I would be very intrigued to know where you acquired it, if you forgive my inquisitiveness. Humbly yours, Antiquary Wayland Smith. The only thing left for me to do is to make my exit. Okay, well then it's back to the sewers. To exit. And I access the sewers from way down behind the Hammerite Chapel. So that's the information I needed. Uh, I haven't killed any nobles or servants, I only killed a bunch of guards and hammers, uh, sadly. So once more, we take the lift down. So this leads me to the question, where does this other door go? That's the way to the crypts. This door here, I never opened, I never got a key that opened it. Huh. Well maybe that's, maybe that's another entrance for the hammers to use so they don't have to come through there. Also. They have the barrack stables and the elevator behind that that I couldn't access. The barrack fighting pits, I guess. Which unfortunately I never got the chance to see. Oh well. Back to the sewers. Which was where? This way. Why was Robert's body not there? Nobody knows. So there's still some mysteries. Robert's body, where did he go and why? Uh, that's weird that the music just starts there. Um, where does the other door go? Again, I guess it's the Hammerite's entrance, but... Uh, have any direct evidence of that. How does the curse get lifted? I don't know, but uh, Elizabeth killing herself certainly didn't do it. And finally, the biggest mystery of all, why wasn't I permitted to see the barrack fighting pits and, and watch the fight happen? I don't know. Oh. 
Oh. Wait. This is a lot longer a path than I expected. Is this? What's this place? It's not look like the entrance to the city that I was hoping for. Oh! This must be the barrack fighting bits. Well, maybe that's maybe that's that mystery answered. And I guess since uh, old what's his name stopped fighting Burroughs, that there's no longer any need um, for fighting fits. I still feel like something's about to happen. When trapped in a corner, the prey shall be the one to signal the beginning of the hunting season. The rising sun will be its refuge. So, east. Go east if we get trapped in here. Dear Mr. Gallant, First of all, I want to thank you for your invaluable assistance. In a way, it is ironic having to hire a thief to find the treasures hidden in your very own home. But I was fed up with searching all nooks and crannies of this damned manor for secret hiding places. You see, my father was rather paranoid about his valuables getting stolen. And when he passed away, he left me the testament, listing items that were hidden away somewhere in this manor. I was never good at finding such concealments, and asking somebody else to search the house was out of the question. Until I had this most ingenious idea of bringing you into the picture. A master thief, most skillful in his procession, uh, profession, but easily blinded by his greed. You are indeed very predictable, Mr. Garrett. Grimworth, the antique dealer who hired you, was no one other than I in disguise. I knew the highly exaggerated story about my demise would be reason enough for you to go on to this day's treasure hunt. Luckily, my two sons are as stupid as rocks, so it was clear that you'd be the one to find my testament first. And here you are, your bag filled with the missing pieces of my father's bequest. As for the horn and the painting, you can keep them. I just mentioned them in my last will, so I could report them stolen and collect the insurance money. The other items I'm going to claim back from you in a few moments. Goodbye, Mr. Garrett. It was a pleasure having you at my service. And I think you'll find your reward quite original. Best wishes, Lord Robert Farrington. You bastard. Is this a thief I see before me? Oh, God. survive this? How am I going to survive this? First question. Is that wood? I'm flying ahead now. I know it's going to happen, but I didn't hear a clank. Maybe it is wood. Is this a rare pair of sticks? No. It's just not noisy. Is there any other wood in here at all? Hmm. 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 Well. Well, well, well. I don't have much health. I've got five hit points. I'm not really going to survive against all those barracks very well, am I? Uh, oh! Maybe the breath potion will help me? There hasn't been any swimming. Hmm. Hmm. It's a skull. Surely that won't help me either. Unfortunately, I didn't find that breath mask from the old sorcerer dude. How am I gonna do this? How am I gonna survive? I don't know. There's a trick to it, clearly. What the trick is, I don't know. But uh, I don't think the breath potion is that, but we'll try. Is this a thief I see before? Uh, 
Oh, maybe this is why I've got so many fire arrows. <laughs> Alright, let's let's try fire arrows. Let's try just killing them. I see before me. God, this is bad. This is oh. This is a terrible design. Terrible design. I don't have any mines or anything. Breath potion is not going to do me any good. There's something for swimming. Uh, skull's not going to do me any good, I think. Alright, let's reload. Let's try a couple of things first. This is probably this is probably cheating, but. Uh, I can drop the skull under this door, and I can drop the breath potion on top of it. Oh, what was that? Uh, if I just drop them here, no, just a stack on top. Okay. Anything else I can drop on top? My block door. No. Oh, I can blow the horn. Scares the barracks away. Or calms them down. Right, firstly, blocking this door did nothing. Secondly, how far away is the horn to scroll to? Yeah, too many too many things. Too many things. It's just past all the keys, right. I see before me. Be gone with you, Oh, well, that's not coming down at all. Okay. <coughs> that's not gonna work, is it? I'm dead. Ah. I'm supposed to survive this with five hit points successfully. So I'm going to cut the recording here. Go find out tips and tricks on how to survive this encounter. And I will be back when I have the answers. Alright, I know what I was missing. And I should hopefully be able to do this without ever getting uh, hurt by these barracks. That's the hope. Um, hmm. Apparently it's possible to stand in the dark here and read the thing. I guess so. There's lots of void riling. Thief I see before me. Hello there. Be gone with you, loud. Yeah, right, I'll be gone in a minute. So, a couple of things. Firstly... Oh god, no, no, no. Don't come in here. So, this symbol on the floor here, when Mr. Friend Barak here has decided to move on, uh, is a sun rising out of the sea. If we look at the antiquary's letter, he talks about uh, the mages of the dawn. There is still one accessible entrance marked by the dawn order symbol a sun rising from the sea. It is said it can only be opened by the call of the Lawrence Horn. The very horn that is in your position. Uh, and the other note that I have, where is it? The ancient book of ancient tome. When trapped in a corner, the prey shall be the one to signal the beginning of the hunting season. The rising sun will be its refuge. Uh, a useful hint if you weren't uh, facing the problem of being constantly covered in baric breath and dying rapidly so that you actually had time to think about this rising sun 
being a refuge and signaling the beginning of the hunting season is blowing horn. It, I understand the hint, but uh, when faced with that kind of pressure, it's very hard to to uh, actually make use of it. If I blow the horn, it opens the passage. I can leave these fine fellows alone. I don't need to slaughter them. Goodbye, friend Burks. I'm going for a swim. Uh, so this, yeah, this place must be the entrance to the Dawn Mages, last refuge. So the story isn't over yet, so this whole exit through the sewers is, uh, was a lie, was a trick. There wasn't too many kind of loot in this water, but there's a passage over this way. Oh, hang on. There's a rope. Alright. I'm going to make a hard save here, because it seems like a, a good, interesting spot to do so. Oops. Also, I'm actually going to quickly load again. I don't want to save this. I want to save, make a save here for the barracks. Right. That way I can reuse quick save. Good. Let's climb up this vine now. Just jump in there a little more carefully. Okay. It does look like these tunnels might have had uh, barracks or something in them as well. But no, just some water. What's going on here? This is clearly uh, where the mages were. Interesting. Is there an ancient library? Whoever may read this. These halls were once a place of research and learning for the Order of the Dawn. We were mages devoted to finding answers to mankind's most fundamental questions that should lead us to a new dawn of enlightenment. But alas, our order is no more, and this scripture shall shed some light on the circumstances that led us to leave this place behind. The founding mages of the dawn order chose this underground location because of its remarkable arcane activity. They let miners carve out these corridors and chambers to provide a space for members to research and study undisturbed from the outside world. The Dawn Order flourished for many generations, but one fatal day, Archmage Celiazar decided to engage a well-known but very questionable necromancer to explore the subject of life and, life and death. Kadar, so the necromancer's name, abused his privileges exclusively for his own dark plans. He built three chambers to perform a bizarre ritual which he hoped would enable him to achieve immortality. He stole the Book of Souls from the Order's library and explored nearby caves to retrieve a powerful Crayman artifact. Fortunately, before Kadar could finish the entire ritual, three Dawn Mages went out to oppose him. In the resulting battle, nobody emerged victorious. The three Mages perished, just as their enemy. From then on, the Dawn Order was cursed. Archmage Seliazar lost his sanity and died shortly afterwards. Other members felt the underground halls disquieting and interfering with their studies. In the end, it was decided to leave this place and everything connected to it behind. We are going to seal all entrances to these halls except for one, which shall open to the call of my horn. May knowledge lighten your path to understanding. Deloran, second mage of the dawn. Okay. Interesting. Let's start there. Uh, why are you running away to ladder? Uh, why are you running away to here in particular? I want to check up there. Odd. Uh, can I use ropes? I can use ropes, okay. Make it easier. 
now is just a void where there aren't any books, okay? It's weird that I can move the ladder back and forth for no particular reason, but mm, okay. Uh, are there any books I should be reading here? This one, I guess. Blue the Dawn, or Dawn Mages. Legendary Artifacts Part 2. A compilation in progress by Nadine, Fifth Mage of the Dawn. The Book of Souls. Despite its poetic name, the Book of Souls is an extremely dangerous reading for the unwary student. The tome contains the words on each of its pages in order to ensnare the reader and eventually devour his or her soul. Countless individuals already fell victim to the book's evil spell. Since there is no known way to destroy the Book of Souls, it is currently locked in the Order's library for safekeeping. The Zrazra. There is not much known about the race of Kraymen, but one legend tells about the Zrazra, an artifact said to have immense arcane power. It is unclear how the Kraymen managed to craft such a powerful relic, nor is anything specific known about its purpose. However, there are rumours that the source of the large amount of magical energy flowing through our halls is the Zrazra itself. AKA the Talisman of Life that I have. Alright. Hmm. Is this your library which where the uh, Book of Souls is locked away, is it? Should I be looking a little harder to find a, a switch? To unlock something. No? Maybe. Maybe I need more information. This bookcase looks suspicious, but it goes just back onto the hallway, so it can't be hiding much if it's hiding anything. Alright, uh, let's continue. See what else is down this hallway. I feel like I should be walking down here out of respect. That's the beta chamber. This must lead to the alpha chamber. Surely all the mages are long dead, right? Mm. Ooh. Guess this is just their uh, cells where they lived? Or was that a prison cell? Yeah, I'm gonna need a key for that. Like the way these, they've made this uh, angled wall for this place. It's not an easy construction to do. Well, I guess it's not impossible. It's not. Evidence shows it's not impossible, but it's uh, definitely a lot more complex than hexagonal passages or rectangular passages. That it's not a door. This one probably also requires a key. Yes. All right, to the beta door, I guess. I try to let's see if I can find the beta door. See if it'll open for me. I've seen the Alpha Chamber, which is where the sword was. I've seen the Gamma Chamber, which is uh, what was redecorated as a Hammerite Hall. The Beta Chamber, well, that doesn't open. Um, is, there, is there anything else missing in this other room? It's the only other room other than the library that I've been able to access. Maybe I need to look a little more carefully, maybe the switch that's blatantly obvious that I missed. It doesn't open that door. Does it open the base chamber? Why do you know? I imagine something's about to go down here. A couple of pages just fell out of the tome you're carrying. Welcome to my lair, Mr. Garrett. These are the ancient halls of a long extinct order of magicians who once lived and worked here. I was a valuable member until fellow mages decided, out of sheer jealousy, to denounce my studies as unethical. Although you may not know me yet, I have been following your steps for a long time. Luring you to Farrington Manor was my idea, and it was me who told you how to escape Robert Farrington's trap. He was a mere puppet in my plan to bring you to where you are now. Unfortunately, you are trapped again. And this time you shall help me before I let you go. I am Kadar, great magician and master necromancer. The ancient tome you are carrying, the Book of Souls, has been my last refuge for many decades. 
My only way to influence the world has been through the words written on these magical pages. Edward Farrington was the one who found this book. He was useful, but in the end he failed me. His son Robert was a far less effective slave, but thanks to him I could finally find you as the ideal pawn to fulfill my plans. It was your connection with the gemstone called the Eye that made me choose you. The power of the Eye made you immune to the danger the talisman of life normally posed to a mortal being. Nobody else would have been able to pick it up without being turned into an undead creature. Now it is time for me to escape this prison and finish what I began so long ago. The purpose of this room, the Fated Chamber, is to bring me back to life. Use the artifacts you brought along, not only to free me, but to be a free man yourself as well. You might be asking yourself why you shouldn't just toss the book into the nearest lava pit. Well, go on and try to throw the tome away. You can't. The only way to make it leave your hands is to place it on the pedestal in the beta chamber. You'd better hurry, Mr. Garrett. There are Kraymen nearby, and they sense the presence of the Zrazra. Needless to say, you wouldn't stand a chance against them if they saw you carrying their holy relic. You must cooperate, because I am the only one who can bring you back to the surface alive. Okay, so it looks like things are about to go down. Uh, let's do the ritual. We have the Book of Souls somewhere. There we are. I don't remember picking it up, but uh, he's quite right. I can't, I can't drop it. There are these three spots clearly for the sister gems. Blood tear. And some spark. I see these are forming a prismatic shape. Uh, and somewhere, where's the third one? Ice heart. Triangular prism. And now we have a pedestal for the Book of Souls. Alright. Let's bring this dude back to life, you know? It's not really my first plan, but we seem to be stuck here. Where is that book? Here we are. Oh. Hello, mate. You look a little unhealthy there. Uh, and then... This is for the Talisman of Life. Also known as the Zrazra. Where is the Talisman? Damn it. There we are. And that fires a skull at him. Thank you, Mr. Garrett, for bringing me back to the world of the living. You must excuse me, but I have more important matters to attend to than helping you escape. I am sure you will find a way out for yourself. Good luck. I've had enough of this. Yeah, me too. Uh, new objectives. Nobody uses you as a pawn. Find Kadar and bring an end to his life. Yeah. I can't take the talisman back. So, Kadar. Uh, if only you'd agreed and kept your bargain, maybe I wouldn't have to kill you, but you've done it now. You're, you're an actual proper ghost, not an uh, evil spirit. Alright, that's fine by me. Oh, you're gonna open this door that I couldn't open before. Thank you. How oh, kind. Is this. There's a key. And. Azakiel's journal. Journal of Scribe Azakiel. The very moment of our triumph became the moment of our defeat. When we forced our way into the Alpha Chamber, Kadar was completely absorbed in performing one of his bizarre rituals. Our grub strode up to the apparently oblivious necromancer 
and drove his sword to the Domicross deep into Kadar's back. But the blade went right through the mage and hit the altar instead. With a shrieking noise, the sword welded itself into the middle of the metal table. Too late we realised that we'd been fooled by Kadar once again, and while his false image was still fading, the masked necromancer appeared floating above us in the air, laughing at our failed assassination. The fight that ensued must have rocked the walls around us. Kadar brought down on us the full power of his unholy magic, and we struggled hard defending ourselves. Nadim was the first to fall, bitten to death by a horde of floating skulls. Enraged from seeing his friend and mentor killed, Akrab attempted a direct frontal attack, a most surprising and foolish action. Apparently, Kadar hadn't expected this move either, otherwise Akrab would never would have gotten near him. He managed to pull the evil mage out of the air, and when they both landed on the ground, a book fell out of Kadar's robe and slid across the stone slabs. The struggle went on for a few moments until Akrab suddenly let out a shriek of horror. He had pulled off the necromancer's mask and revealed the cavernous face of someone who should have died long ago. A second later, Akrab was hurled away from Kadar and smashed hard into the wall behind him. Then he went down with a gravity-defying slowness, leaving a dark trail of blood on the wall. Now I was the only one left to oppose Kadar. But I knew that I, a simple scribe with mediocre arcane skills at best, could pose no threat to him. And from the mocking way Kedar grinned at me, he was well aware of this too. But then I saw how his eyes briefly glanced at the book lying between us on the floor, and how the muscles in his face suddenly tensed. Only then did I realise that I had seen the stone before. It was the Book of Souls. More by instinct than reason, I leapt towards the book, only to meet a massive surge of energy that threw me back. But fate would have it that the book was affected by the magical blow as well and landed just a few feet away from me. Still stunned by Kadar's shockwave, I crawled forward and got hold of the tome. But by that time, the necromancer was already standing in front of me. He held out a hand, haughtily expecting me to surrender and give him the book. But I mustered up the last of my strength and threw it in the direction of the sword. Although Zedormikos was stuck in the altar, its blade was still sharp, sharp enough to cut the book into halves as it struck the weapon. This had unforeseen consequences. At first, Kadar flinched as if somebody had stabbed him into the abdomen. Faint purple drops of magic energy appeared around him, their glow constantly increasing. Then the necromancer started to scream, a most disturbing sound no human would be capable of. I had to avert my eyes from the blinding light Kadar was emanating. And then the world exploded around me, leaving me in total darkness. When I woke up, the first thing I did was to look at my hands. Or better, at the floor, I could see right through them. I had become a ghost, an undead spectre bound to this place by a curse that the book must have placed on me just before Kadar died. Very quickly it became apparent to me that I was unable to touch or move anything around me, and somehow I knew for certain that my two friends were sharing the same fate, confined somewhere else in this desecrated crypt. I strayed aimlessly for days until I reached the Order's living quarters. My chamber had been sealed off, but much to my surprise, I was able to open its door and actually move around my personal belongings. This has enabled me to write down the events of the past in this journal. Kadar is still alive. I can hear his voice in my head. The Book of Souls has been the source of his exceptionally long life. When I managed to cut it in halves, Kadar could no longer keep his mortal form. He imbued himself into the book's pages in order to repair it. Now he is waiting for some unwitting fool to discover the tome and to perform the ritual that will bring him back to life. We skip a few pages. After decades of silence, the Book of Souls has finally been found. I can hear how Kadar is trying to persuade the unlucky finder, somebody called Edward Farrington, to search for the items needed to perform the ritual. Something went wrong with Kadar's plan. I could clearly hear Nadim's ghost talk to the finder, warning him that taking the talisman of life would turn him into an undead creature. Edward ran back, screaming in terror, and shortly afterwards he threw the book into the fire. Unfortunately, only Akrab's sword can harm the book in any way. As I feared, the book has been picked up again, this time by Edward's wife Elizabeth. Only now do I realise the gruesome entirety of the necromancer's plan. According to an old pagan ritual, Kedar has to conceive a child with a direct relative of his, and through this child he will reincarnate as an immortal being. 
For this, Kadar made another woman pregnant in her sleep with the intention of capturing the daughter once she would turn 18. But before that could happen, we foiled his plan. Elizabeth is the great-grandchild of Kadar's secret daughter, and she will be his target this time. But first he needs to be resurrected, and for that, Kadar seeks somebody who can touch the talisman of life without being turned into an undead creature. Kadar drove the Farringtons into madness. Elizabeth somehow realized her connection with the necromancer and hanged herself in her chamber. Edward took his life in the attic shortly afterwards. It seems that Robert, their son, will inherit the manor when he returns to the city. I can clearly feel that Kadar has something special in store for him, and that Elizabeth's death did not end this. You skip a few pages. I fear Kadar has finally found his perfect pawn, a thief named Garak who has been involved in occult phenomena before. Kadar persuaded Robert to stage his death and to forge a testament listing all the items needed for the ritual. No doubt this will lure Garrett to the manor. Curiously, the last paragraph's ink hasn't even dried yet. Mr. Garrett, I knew you'd come here sooner or later to bring Kadar back to the living. As you know by now, he has fooled you. He is currently preparing everything for the last ritual in the Gamma Chamber. He's going to resurrect Elizabeth and give her a child that will be his re reincarnation. You must destroy Kadar's source of energy before he can finish the ritual. Take the key on this table and leave our halls immediately. May you succeed where we fail. Azakiel, 4th May to the Dawn. Okay. I'm taking the key. I'm guessing that opens these two doors that I couldn't open before. Uh, but before I do that, I'm just going to come back to this ritual chamber. Oh, he's taking the book with him. Oh, I was going to say, can I just cut the book in half? Uh, I guess not. However, I'm going to end the episode here on this lovely view. And uh, see you here shortly for the next episode. Thanks for watching.